Hello and welcome to part 12 of the Pokemon Gold Randomized Nuzlocke. So the last time we were together, I think I mentioned that we were going to take on the radio tower. I realized, however, upon entering, that we first have to fight Price. So we're just going to go ahead and do the 7th gym, since we have to in order to progress any farther. Looks like we're gonna fight Border Ronald first. So we've got a pretty good, pretty good matchup right here. Um, one or two wing attacks should be able to take care of this Venusaur. Yeah, there we go. Okay, not sure if we needed the critical hit. I'm, I'm sure it couldn't hurt. Definitely couldn't hurt. Um, Dugong. Okay, so I want to test a theory. I feel like I remember that steel is super effective against ice. And I'm not sure now if dugong is water ice. Um, I'm gonna check on that while we receive a nice little headbutt from the dugong. Yeah, it looks like dugong is water ice. Um, I think the wing attack should finish it off. But it does look like steel is super effective against ice. It's just that steel is also uh, resistant, uh, resisted by water. So Quillfish is coming out. We're gonna send out Buzz Lightyear in order to just do a single Thunder Punch. Knock this guy out. I love Thunder Punch Zoom. I love all the punches, really. I feel like I remember Fire Punch being... The animation being a little weak, but I love the animation for Thunder Punch and Ice Punch, especially in these games. This game, too, I also feel has a great animation for uh, Try Attack, if I'm remembering correctly. We want to make sure we hit all the trainers, of course. Um, I mean, this place truly can be a maze. It just occurred to me the parallel between this gym and the ice path that we'll have to go through after taking out the radio tower. And you know, come to think of it, I feel like it is, but I can't be confident in saying that the radio tower, beating the radio tower is actually necessary to progress through the rest of the game. I feel like it must be. They wouldn't include it uh, in the storyline as such a relevant event if it wasn't necessary. At least that's my my mode of thinking there. Our Bungle Loops is leveling up pretty nicely. It's becoming sort of the star member of our team. We haven't really leveled up Elite Saurus in, in a hot minute. Um, in fact, though, since we're seemingly cruising a lot of these trainers, I'm going to move up Lightyear to the front. Um, these trainers have decently... I hate to say weak, but not all that strong Pokemon. <laughs> Interesting, Voltorb. So for Voltorb, uh, fearing the self-destruct, we're actually going to keep in Bungle Loops for this one. I feel... Mm, Again, I can't be sure, um, but I feel that because of Bungaloop's steel type, and also his... Let me just verify. Oops. Yes, also because of his pretty high physical defense, I feel that he could take an explosion pretty well. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and Metal Claw. Is Voltorb? Voltorb, I believe, is just electric in this game. Not electric steel. I'll tell you what, when I hear a uh, when I hear a screech come through these headphones, I think my defense lowers slightly. Um, not sharply, but it's definitely pretty jarring. So I can understand as a Pokemon, getting a face of that would be uh, be a little aggressive. took out the goal in there. So 
So I think a good goal for, let's see. So we have the radio tower and ice path. I think personally a good goal before fighting, what's her name, Claire? Claire in Blackthorn City is to have all of our Pokemon at at least level 40. That, I think that would be a good place to start. So your water ground. Um, I think Problem Kid is going to be the best bet here. So here's another thing. Um, I want to say Price is one of the easier gym leaders because his highest Pokemon is only level 31. We just fought Jasmine, whose highest is a level 35. Um, and I think Price, you know, Price only has three Pokemon, his highest is level 31. It's a little underwhelming for being like the seventh gym leader in my opinion. Okay. I'm gonna keep Lightyear in and go for a Thunder Punch, and if it turns out that he puts us to sleep, I'll probably go ahead and switch in uh, Umbreon. Well, ain't switching now, that's for sure. Yeah, moves like Mean Look can really fuck up your Nuzlocke. Always gotta be careful of those. Yeah, having all of our Pokemon by level 40 by the time we fight Claire, at least level 40, I think would be a pretty good goal. Um, I'll have to go back and check what our, uh, what the Elite Four looks like. I think, I'm, if I had to guess, I'd say the highest Pokemon in the Elite Four is probably like level 55, maybe lower, maybe like level 52 or something like that. Um, I don't think, I don't think it's going to be... I don't think the minimum is going to be any lower than 50. I think the highest Pokemon will be at least level 50. And if I remember correctly, when you fight the Elite Four again a second time, or uh, it's, it's like a time after you've done a certain thing. Okay, so I need to get to this block right here to my right so that I can go left and then straight up to get to where I need to go to get to price. So down, left, up, right. Okay, easy peasy. Um, well, let's not fuck around. I think we're, I think we're ready to take on price. I do... I feel like I do remember Price being pretty difficult when it comes to his Pillow Swine, even though it's only level 31. I think I remember Pillow Swine being being kind of a pain in the ass to deal with. So maybe, maybe I I uh, I spoke too early when I said that Price didn't seem that difficult of a trainer. All right, we got pretty lucky uh, avoiding the sand attack there. That was that was gonna make our job a little bit harder, killing this Umbreon. Yeah, see, I expected the quick attack there. I a quick attack of my own, I don't think would have done the job, and I would have then just risked two quick attacks. So Kingdra is Water Dragon, I believe. So we won't get the uh, super effective, but we'll do some damage here. Looks like uh, three should take it out. Okay, we survived a twister pretty well. How crazy is that, by the way? Moves like uh, moves like Twister. Kingdra is literally throwing a straight up tornado at us, and we're just fucking helpless. Like, well, actually, Buzz Lightyear ain't so helpless. He just literally withstands a tornado. Man, that 
That was almost a full uh, bar of level up there. Magmar? Yeah. We're gonna switch to, uh, to our Umbreon here. Now that I think about it, actually, maybe a better choice. Let's play this a little strategically since he's a higher level. Maybe a better choice would have been Leet Saurus so we could have gotten off his Surf. I think one Surf would probably have taken care of this Magmar. Umbreon, I just... I'll confirm that real quick. I feel like Umbreon's special defense is out of this world, though. Oh, ah, I always do that. Yeah, this highest stat, um, at least from what I saw there. Gotta love when we get the flinch there. Oh man, you know what I just think would be really OP? Maybe I should be giving Problem Kid King's Rock? Cause that's, what is it? That, that stacks chance of flinching, right? That could be, that could be double the chance. Price is a pretty good trainer for being, uh... You think he'd be very... cold? <clears throat> I love, uh, I love when they explain the TMs after we get them and they're not... they're not, re uh, relevant anymore to the actual effect of the move. Uh, how Seismic Toss demonstrates the harshness of winter. I, I really appreciate that. Okay. Now we can start making our way to the radio tower. Let's heal. And we'll head straight to Goldenrod. Um, I don't have a flyer, so we'll just have to go... As I said in the previous episode, the old-fashioned way. So we've, we've made this trip a few times now. Do we have any items to sell? Let's check that out real quick. Nope. Uh, Goldenrod is south. You know... I don't always really need fly when you've got the the speed through on. Like, yeah, it would have been faster to fly, but that wasn't that wasn't too bad. So I think the first thing we need to do is take over the rocket tower before actually going to the underground. But after we do the rocket tower, we'll get the key to open. Wow, an entei to open uh, the area in the underground. By the way, friends, uh, right when I was recording. No, it was right before I recorded this episode, I was making my way back, yeah, back into Mahogany Town, right? And I went the same way that, like, we came, like, where you go up kind of towards National Park, but you go right and then cut uh, that tree and then go straight up. And I kid you not, in that patch of grass, right before you go straight up to cut the tree, uh, the roaming Entei, uh, we encountered it. Just like, totally randomly. Um, and it brought me back to the first time when I was a kid, the first time I ever saw one of the dogs roaming was I was in uh, New Bark Town and I just went west on like that very first route you ever go through and boom, level 40 Entei. And I thought, I thought I just found out the craziest thing in the world. I mean, I thought, I thought some magic had happened. So it was really nice to be able to see the, the Entei. And if, uh, I don't know how other people play, but in Nuzlocke, I consider the roaming Pokemon to be valid targets for catch. Um, I kind of think of them as like static Pokemon, but it's just, because they are static. Like if you fight them, the next time you fight them, they're going, it, it is the same Pokemon um, as indicated by 
its health. It's just like it's like a static Pokemon you can battle several times, and the encounter is still kind of random, I guess, for all intents and purposes. Um, but yeah, it was it was really cool to see that roaming Entei. Um, I got off a uh, false swipe on it. It really didn't do a whole lot of damage. And uh, I was able to lower its health just a little bit before it roared us away. So perhaps in a future episode... And you know what's funny is I, I sort of even forgot about the existence of the roaming Pokemon. Because I... I don't always just think to go after them, um, especially since they're so much like higher level. It it sometimes seems, well, especially in a Nuzlocke, a little bit dangerous to go searching for that kind of trouble. But it always seems like I want them a little bit too late in the game, and and therefore it's easier to just forget about them. But. I mean, I love the bird Pokemon, like the original, you know, Moltres, Zapdos, Articuno, and I love like Mewtwo and Mew. I just, I think Gen One legendaries are so freaking cool, but then Gen Two got it so well too. Like Lugia and Ho-Oh, I think kick ass. Like just the design of these Pokemon, um, like their artwork and like their lore, I think is so incredibly cool. Like especially Mewtwo and Mew. I just think that's like awesome. Um, the dogs, I just think, I just, like, might be my absolute favorite. Specifically because they are, like, so mysterious. Like, every other Pokemon, like, you might you might have to do a lot to get to them. But it's like, they're right there waiting for you. And the dogs, just like, they don't give a fuck. They're just like, you might find us. Or you might not. Um... So, and I, there might have been other Pokemon like that in future generations where it's like, you're not, you're maybe not like as likely to see them as just like your typical static encounter. Um, I don't really have any good examples, but I just, I think it's such a, such a cool mechanic. I think their mystery um, is what makes them so cool. Also like Entei in the uh, Pokemon, what is that the Pokemon 2000 movie? Um, or Pokemon Movie 3 or something like that. Uh, whichever one Entei was in, I just... Man, I thought that was a cool movie. Although I was terrified of Entei thinking that I was going to get stolen from my family. Uh, that's a pretty fucked up kids movie. Uh, like and comment if you agree. Chat's blowing up about, about the movie with Entei right now. Apparently one dude did get kidnapped by Entei. Couldn't be me. I do remember having nightmares about it though. I'd wake up and uh, expect to be in that creepy like, between worlds realm. You know, when Electabuzz comes out, its cry sort of reminds me of the legendary a little bit. I feel like the legendary cries are, like, very, like, exaggerated and powerful and whatnot.
Has the silence gotten awkward yet? Just sort of holding out until I started to feel uncomfortable. Just as a just as a little experiment. First, I just didn't really have anything to say. And then I thought, you know what? I noticed the silence. I wonder how long it would take before anyone watching this would start to get uncomfortable or think that something had happened to the audio. I definitely, I definitely think I struggle a little bit with uncomfortable silences. I don't mind a silence, but I think I prefer intentional silence. Oh, you're good. Okay, we like you. You're 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 a good guy. But I feel like this scientist is not good. This looks very much like a trainer. Yeah. Also, there's a looks like a, like that green-haired girl walking around up there. What what is she doing here? Is she a trainer? Cause like she needs to get the hell out of here. Unless she's like being held captive, but like she's just like walking around freely. Like she needs to get the fuck out. I kind of forgot that Thunder Punch could paralyze. Um, we haven't gotten so lucky. I think the chance is probably, I guess it's small, but maybe like 10, 15% or something, maybe. What is coughing? Poison? We don't have a ground type yet to deal with poison. Yeah. Ah, oh, fuck. It did just occur to me that this thing could know. Self-destructor explosion though, so we're actually gonna go ahead and send in bunga loops. Yeah, that That would have really sucked to deal with. Oh thank god. Yeah, anyone else would have just got fucking murked by that. Murkrow. We do have a fighting move on the source. Ah, but see, Murkrow's dark flying, so really what we need is, uh... Oh, what's super effective against dark? Is it ghost, or is that vice versa? I think this is just going to be neutral damage. Yeah, because it resists fighting with... Oh, wow, that critical hit. Really, uh, really clutch. Yeah, so like, are you a trainer? Oh, she's literally just here to like, help give us information. That's actually kind of nice. Thank you for being there. Funny, the first uh, unknown we've encountered. Off screen, I've done a few of the uh, of the puzzles just for fun, just kind of for nostalgia's sake. But I haven't encountered any unknown in the ruins of Alf. Man, I thought I thought the unknown were so cool. Um, we're not gonna learn Screech. job, Light. You're really putting in work with these Thunder Punches. It's funny, because when I... I feel like Pokemon trainers in the, in the anime are usually, like... I don't know what the right word is. Maybe, like, a little more clever? 
Oops, yep. Forgot that uh Swine Up was ground type. That was that was silly. Um Fire would be good. Fighting would be quad effective, I believe. So we're gonna send out Leech Source. Uh Leech Source is weak to ice though. But if it only knows powder snow, we shouldn't be in too much trouble. One double kick should take care of it. Oh yeah, <laughs> one kick should take care of it. Scizor, yep, we're gonna keep in on um, our Pokemon with the fighting move. Would be cool to have a, a Scizor off. That sounds, sounds mildly dirty. man on a motorcycle out there with an extremely large penis. Just kind of... Just kind of letting it all, all hang out. Of a, there are a lot of trainers in this area. We might have to end up splitting this episode into multiple parts. Nice. I love, I love seeing the first Pokemon in the lineup be something that we can actually use light year for. Um, like I said, I think that there's a there's a disproportionate amount of water Pokemon in these games. I guess I just feel like it makes it a lot more likely that when something does come out, that it's going to be a water type. Or flying for that matter. Like there, I feel like there are a lot of different types that could come out that um, electric could be uh, at least somewhat good against. So here, I mean, I'm pretty sure it's just going to self-destruct, but we're just going to maybe hit it with a wing attack. Okay. Man, I definitely underestimated the value of having a steel Pokemon on our team, especially when we're dealing with self-destructors. Now we're gonna we're gonna keep out Onyx. Because I think we can metal claw it. Take it out in one shot. Man, Bungle Loops is really putting in work getting these levels up. Levels up, level ups. Almost time to bring Problem Kid in for a, for a little bit. I feel like Problem Kid hasn't gotten a whole lot of love this episode. We sort of trained up Problem Kid uh, to be way higher than our other Pokemon when we were getting the Umbreon. And then he, he's come in handy every so often, but... By the way, Tango is one of those Pokemon that I just think is so weird in this game because its sprite is like so much more like teal than blue in this game, in my opinion. Like, oh, okay, the crit definitely helped us there. Like, I look at Tangela, and I remember how it looks in, like, the show and in, like, even just Gen 1. At least I think I remember how it looked in Gen 1. And... Oh, hi, director. Oh! Wow, I definitely just got fooled. Wow, egg on my face, huh? Man, that's so embarrassing. I might not even upload this episode. That was just, that was just sad. So, 
It looks like the executive is actually gonna just be straight up stronger than Price. Um, especially in a randomized Nuzlocke because it could have, it could have anything. We're probably going to want to take some of these, um... Yeah, we're going to, we're going to want to take this battle a little more seriously. Um, I'd hate to, I'd hate to make a mistake that costs us, uh... That costs us a Pokemon or, you know, potentially a run of the game. Surf should do the job. We're going to keep Lead Source out for Lickitung because we've got a fighting move. Almost certainly would have killed with stab. Oh, what <laughs> the critical uh, really coming in clutch. Now let's keep out lead source for the snubble. So here's what I'm trying to decide: is it better to have our Umbreon be holding the the black classes to power up dark moves, or is it better to give Umbreon King's Rock uh, so that bite? has, what, essentially, like, double the chance of flinching, or, or like, a, like, a 1.5 times the chance? I didn't actually see what's coming out, so. Oh, ho, ho, how sweet. Looks like a Surf. Uh, a Surf will do some serious damage. We're not sure if we'll get it in one hit, but we're gonna... That's funny, that's actually what I would expect this trainer to have, is a Nitto King. I guess, like, I think about, like, Giovanni... Right, Giovanni had a Nitto King, didn't he? Okay, so now we get the basement key. I believe we can't open that area to the right just yet um, until we use the basement key to go to the underground. We're gonna have to do sort of another little rocket lair type challenge. So why don't we do this? Uh, this episode is already past 30 minutes. I'm gonna go ahead and say that we're going to save right outside the underground. And in the next episode, we'll come back and we'll take care of the, uh, the, the rocket basement. Cool. Looking forward to seeing you guys in the next episode.